We're going to find out if he's playing it again because game number four is getting underway. So is going to need two straight if he wants to win this series. And this is his last match of the night. After this, his season is over, but he's already clinched. Yeah, but he definitely wants to go out on, you know, a big note here. No one wants to lose their last match of the season going into the playoffs. No, I mean, he's going to Super J is going to queue up Rogue and we've heard Purple say it. He thinks this matchup is favored for the Rogue. Yeah, you know what? He uh, he's pretty good with Rogue as well. Oh, that's a Shinjin in his deck. This might be, you know, with Zelay's aggressiveness in mind, you know, things like Grim Patron and Hunter. Yeah, this card uh, floated in, you know, from time to time during the Miracle era. And a lot of it had to do with going into those key turn eights. If you played a Taz Dingo, your opponent had to actually deal with it before they could Leroy you three times because they needed the full eight to Leroy and double shadow step. Mm. So what you do is on turn seven, you'd play this card and they would have to deal with it. And then you would roll into your turn eight and then Leroy them three times. And I was like, this is genius. I <laughs> love that this card's in here. Uh, I love that you called it Tash Dingo because anyone who didn't play back in the day might not have an idea of what you just said. Like well, it's what, just that what he means. says when he comes into yeah, play. Yeah, it says when yeah. he comes into play, but they might not have seen the card in play, you know, if you, if you, do, if you just play Law of Constructed. That's, that's kind of true. This card has been very, very gone from the metagame for quite a while. It's making a little bit of a comeback. You need the right tools for the right jobs. And Pilot Shredder is a tough job to, to it, handle. It handles Pilot Shredder pretty well. Yeah. One of the, I think it's one of the best ones out there in terms of a defensive mechanism. I mean, plus, it's just, it's just a great card against Hunter. A lot of handlock from Zelay. I, I honestly think that this is a test for him, where he's trying to make sure that he gets this deck fully known in a lot of matchups where maybe he is at a disadvantage because eventually you're going to run into that. Yeah, you know, I think this is a lot about, you know, something for him himself, as you said, you know, a test. You know, I want to make sure that I can still play this deck at a high level. And then two, as we, as we were talking about, you want to show them something different going into the playoffs. Yeah. You know, it's either that or you just play five games of Grim Patron and show them <laughs> nothing different. You know what I mean? Like, if you, if you give them five games of the same deck, then they're going to prepare for that one, and you can maybe take advantage from there. Prep sprint immediately from Super JJ. Not a surprise, considering what he has it available. Even going to backstab. Again, not a big surprise. Just wants to make sure this Azure Drake is handleable. Actually, doesn't pick up a, uh, a sap here, though. This is this is a big deal. Yeah, uh, sap pretty good in this matchup. Generally, you can take care of 8-8s for two mana, get a lot of tempo out of them, especially when they do something like Defender of Argus or Sunfear Protector along with it, and you can get some big tempo swings. Uh, you got to believe he's going to find one pretty soon, but he didn't find any of them there, and he's already had a ton of cards into his deck. Now that Zelay doesn't know that, I fully expect Lothab to hit here. This is going to take away all of his utility. Uh, Azure Drake won't look appealing on this board position. You have to believe that your opponent likely has the sap. Man, Lothab, just, it's so good against the Rogue deck. There's a lot of games where you play it into them, and they actually just can't play anything. Yep. Instead, he's going to Mortal Coil. Look, it's just wanting to life tap a lot more. That's that's yeah. interesting to me. Still gets Ancient Watcher this turn as well. Yeah, maybe he's trying to force out a Blade Flurry here and then follow up with a Lothab. Obviously, he's looking for better Lothab timing. Um, yeah, the timing of Lothab is really important in this matchup because it's generally backbreaking. Like, if you have any kind of lead at all and you get to follow up with a low thub, it's really hard for Rogue to come back. It just feels very different from, that's just not what I expected from Zelay. Right. You know, I, it, just, it feels like building the tension and taking away your opponent's options just is what he would do. Yeah, he's not going to combo this SI7 agent, but he is going to combo this Eviscerate behind it. And you may see him uh, not even use his dagger here. One, you don't want to give you know, too much damage is a lay for Molten Giants too. He wants to keep a fully charged dagger because he's, his man is going to be busy and there's the turn where he's going to go off of Tinker Sharp's at oils and he needs to have a fully charged dagger. Yeah, so just try to keep it in check and Zelay now with a, a little bit of a tough turn in front of him. It feels like Sludge Belcher right now is his only good play. But if you play Sludge Belcher and your opponent has Sap, you're looking at a burn card. Yeah, you're looking at a burn card plus it gives Super JJ a big opening. Sap into Tinker Sharp Sword oil. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, I'm getting Dark Bomb instead. Yeah, I, I don't mind Dark Bombing here as well. I mean, you can still Defender of Argus if you want the turn. You can do Life Tap. You can do all kinds of things. And I get aggressive with this Ancient Watcher. So his sequencing spot on. Understood that three threes are very likely to get followed up here. Uh, also, it just gets another card out of his hand. He's still playing around Sap, you know, burning stuff. Ooh, a little, a little Ed one. Draw, especially because you just saw your opponent use an Iron Beak Owl. Yeah. Backstab, Eviscerate, attack the Owl. 6-6, six, six, go. Seems okay to me. Yeah, let's see if Super JJ wants to move in that hard. You got to believe he's going to go for it. Yeah. If he didn't see this Iron Beagle, I don't think this would be on the menu. 
but since he just saw that happen, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> Your yeah. opponent has to have the other Iron Beagle now. Yeah, I definitely like this push uh, from Super JJ here. You know, even if he could have made this bigger, I I think he would just would have kept it at six six. Yeah, I'd play around BGH. Yep, it's the last card you want to run into with uh, with moving in on a Van Cleef. Yeah, I mean, once you see a couple of the, the cheaper answers for it, you don't want to run into what might be the you know one of the biggest swing turn. I mean, you don't want to give him a BGH target since there are none in your deck. Yep. And this yeah. is this is such a tough turn because if he, if Zelay leaves this minion on board, there's a chance that he just dies. Yeah, Tinker Sharps and Oil can do some insane things. You couple it with a Blade Flurry, Super JJ, you're looking at lethal. Rogue is just scary. I don't I don't know the best way to play against this deck. I feel like every time I play against it, I win a lot either when I'm a, like a hyper aggressor and they don't have the right answers, or when I just outright kill every minion they play every single turn. Uh, that's actually the two ways to beat it right there. You just nailed it on yeah. the head. You either beat them up to where they're always on defensive and can't ever get anything going, or you just kill everything they do, and sometimes you know they just don't have a sprint early game and they can't recoup. Yep. So you it's want to be get Dr. them, Boom. yeah. You want to get them to a really low hand total. Preparation, I, th I think preparation would have outright ended this game. Yeah, prep would have ended it. Yeah, it would have been six twelve. Yeah, it would have been a lot of damage. Hold on, it would have been nineteen damage exactly. Pilot Shredder SI seven eight is going to be what he goes with. Yeah, Zale, look at Zale. He's like, I'm, I'm not dead. Yeah. It's, it's got to be a, a good feeling, but still staring down a pretty tough board. I think Zelay's pretty surprised that he's alive. Once again, deep in thought. Turn's still looking kind of bad, though. You know, I mean, Hellfire's just got four mana left over. Look I, at this I, hand. Yeah, I was going to say, is there ever a chance you Hellfire here since the, the Pilot Shredder's minion comes out first before the bomb? I mean, yes and no. I think I think your opponent. You haven't seen sap from your opponent either, um, so you're looking forward to those turns. An armor smith. That's one of the better ones he could see. You know, a one power minion, not that menacing. Now, why did the boombot activation? Oh, the pilot shredder came down second. Oh, yeah, it came down yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it did. It came down the turn. He killed the doctor boom. Yeah. Yeah. I got a little ahead of myself there. I was kind of confused. I was like, is that right? I yeah. feel I feel like Tannen's just wrong. Like he usually is. Like usual. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fully embraced my hate at this point. Yep. I welcome I'm it. Such, I'm such a hater. Eh. Yeah. You have your good moments too. I'm gonna add the uh, the big game hunter here. It contests this armor smith. Plus, as we said, there are no targets for big game hunter in the rogue deck usually. You know, it's really funny that that comes up because if you play the big game hunter first, your opponent is more likely to go in on a van cleef. Yeah. And so this card's like stuck in your hand until you see well, a Van Cleef. I mean, a, a lot of the versions of Rogue don't even run Van Cleef anymore. A lot of people have been taking the card out. Yeah, I don't think I've cut it. I think it's too good. Oh yeah, it just leaves too many free wins. That's why I like it. Yeah. You know, sometimes a 6-6 six, six on turn two, just good enough to get the game over with. <laughs> is a 6-6 six, six on turn two really that good? It's pretty good. Siphon Souls found its way in. That's I wonder if that, you know, I wonder if that was in there earlier, like this might be something because, you know, Super JJ's been playing hand lock and stuff himself, and he just wants to have another card that deals with an 8-8. And is this Lothip timing right? I feel like turn five was his real opportunity to play that, and since then he's been, just been fighting from behind the entire time. Now, you can see something like maybe like Lothip Defender of Argus' turn, but not sure I love that. What are his other options? He gets Siphon Soul, the Azure Drake. Yeah, it doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> no, I, I, once you life tap, that's really your only option. So yeah. it's committed you can't to that leave, plan. Yeah, you can't leave Azure Drake sitting around. And is that, is that enough? I think that is enough. It's 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, so uh, Super JJ. Super JJ just missed Lethal, yeah, I believe. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, fifty-six, seven, eighteen. Very quick play. Super JJ, complete oversight. Uh, yeah. Was accounting for the way he was going to play his turn and just followed through on that. Yeah. Didn't account for his card draw. So this is yeah. Uh, the Lothar was coming into play like as the, the yeah. as the deadly poison got into his hand. That is uh, that's a that's a big misstep. I don't even know if he spotted it yet. I think he's just playing the Lothar and hoping to himself as he doesn't have a way to defend Hold against on. Is this. It, it's it's six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's six damage per Tinker Shark. Oh, six, oil. twelve. Yeah, four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's 14 from his hand for nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for some reason, I was only counting three for one of the Tinker Sharps at Oil. Pretty so. rare misstep, but again, the, the pressure has been on Super JJ this entire season, and so focused on this. I mean, you can. I mean, he clearly was thinking about this turn during Zelay's entire turn. Yeah, this is the turn he set up, you know, the turn before, and the yeah. turn before that. You know, he knew what he was going to do. So, you know, it's hard to... It's hard to get on him about it. You know, he just made the play quickly that he had already had set up in his mind. Yeah, and Zelay going to stifle the ability for him to secure lethal this turn, I believe. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage available. This actually may have, there's a potential this cost him the game. Yeah, there is actually. Uh, I mean, he can still sap this uh, mountain giant here and just attack for a little bit and just hope to God to have, you know, one minion left over, but... If you leave the Lotheb on his on uh, Zelay's side of the board, there's a chance you could lose as well. Yeah, if he's doing this, I gotta believe he's sapping. Pretty rare to see a rogue with armor. Even the one point of damage here is a little bit scary. You, know, you just saw your opponent. He's just not gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to 10 mana. <laughs> you could activate a double Molten Giant turn. That's not good. I wonder if he just realized he missed lethal that turn. I don't know. I still feel like he hasn't counted. I almost feel like he hasn't counted his damage quite yet. And Zale this this lethal, by the way, is out of nowhere. I don't think Zelay is expecting this quite yet. Yeah, because the way that Super JJ is played. Yep. Wow, he's going to roll the dice in the 50-50. And that actually, this completely shuts off Super JJ's chance for lethal next turn. It's the wrong target. So, you know, Super JJ at 8, but... He's got to deal with the Ragnaros. He's going to have to sprint here and then hope to... He's going to have to hope and pray, and he might have lost this game. Yeah, he has to draw Sap. Two and four. Doesn't get Sap, so... I mean, that's, that's enough. He cannot heal himself. He cannot get enough minions on the board to protect himself. That one turn cost Super JJ this game. That's, you know, that's brutal, but that's why it's so important to be counting all your damage every single turn. Well, I guess the Blood Mage down us here. Yeah, I think at this point he may have realized it actually, like kind of reading his hand and going, wow, I can't believe I actually lost this game. Yep, Mountain Giant Shadow Flame, however, <laughs> however inefficient it is, uh, you know, he just has to be efficient enough. Eight points of damage from Ragnaros securing this game. Super JJ, uh, that's, a, that's a major blunder. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to even, like, come at this. You know, I don't want to sound so bad to Super JJ. He's had so much pressure on him at the end of the season here, and it's so hard to keep up with all this. I mean, you know, the season is crumbling around him.